here in uh, social media, Facebook land. Um, we are here uh, with Rondra Nika Shaw. She is my latest uh, coaching graduate. Let's go ahead and give her a good old hand clap, you know, virtual hand. <laughs> Um, and uh, she graduated through our um, six month program. And, you know, it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to go through this program, but she went through it. And um, I just thank God that she she stuck it out. And she she really worked it to the point where um, she was able to get over a lot of different things that were holding her back. And so I'm excited to be here with you all and for you all to see um, the process uh, of coaching with with her and how, how everything went. And I'm going to be calling her Ronnie throughout because we just, we got it like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to go ahead and, and get started with um, my questions and then anybody else that wants to ask questions, you can, you can do so. So the, the first question I have for you is, what made you say you needed coaching and, and yes to coaching? Um, I actually had to come to a realization that there was certain um milestones that I was striving to uh, meet that I was not getting those things done um, per my own way. And so I knew that, um, actually this was, you were something that um, Holy Spirit led me to. Mm. Another divine connection, it actually happened perfectly. And um, I knew that this was something God wanted me to do. Once we talked, um, it just aligned perfectly for me. But um, yeah, I, I wasn't meeting my goals because of my own uh, issues, um, things that were hindrances for me. Um, and, and they were really a part of my norm and so I needed someone to point those things out to me. And that's where you came in. At. You actually helped me to realize things that I hadn't realized uh, in, a, in, a, in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how was that? Like actually coming to the realization of some things that you have been going through and had been experiencing, you know, over the past, you know, years of your life? Mm. I mean, sometimes it, it was, sometimes it was an easy task for you. And, you know, because of my, my own personality, I'm not always an easy person to uh, receive correction, especially at that point in my life. Uh, I wasn't really good at receiving correction, but uh, thank God that I, I have become teachable and um, it's a whole lot easier to help me to see my own, especially that I'm in a place I want to change. So it became easier as time went on. Um, mm -hmm. I also had to, to become consistent, which has been a, a struggle throughout my life with consistency and um, things like that. You played a part in all of that. So it was needed. This was yeah, a, a said, great investment. That's a fine connection. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, when you first came to me, you know, you, you had a lot of stuff that you wanted to do as well. So it wasn't just like the emotional and, you know, getting through a lot of your mental strongholds. Like you wanted to write your book and you wanted to have like your, um, your, your homeless shelter. And it, I mean, it was just a whole lot of things. And I know you're probably like, when I was telling you, look, you got to slow down. <laughs> I, I need us to do like maybe one or two things at a time while we're working on, you know, the internal. So, you know, like kind of like looking back, how was it for you to actually like slow down and really like process things so that you could actually get to those things later on? I don't, I don't think that um, what I started to do when you were advising me of these things, I started to take out the time to, um, try to focus on one project at a time, which mm -hmm. God was leading me to do that anyway, even mm -hmm. though I had already gotten my, um, um, I had already like gotten the businesses started. I had gotten the, um, gotten them registered and everything, but I still was being led to work on one project at a time. Right. And so I didn't want to overwhelm myself with these things. And mm -hmm. even, even now, you know, there are certain instructions that God has given me 
that I still have not um, completely done everything he asked me to do. Like this going live thing. I, I don't like going live. I don't like going <laughs> live. So it's an issue for me as well. And even with my book, um, I struggle with my book sometimes. Like, God, why do I got to say all this? <laughs> say all this. But I have to get out of my way because everything that happened to me happened to me for a reason. And God wants to use it to help someone else. And mm -hmm. so I have to allow those things to flow. It's a, yeah. it's a process. So yeah. I have to, you know, I had to learn how to give myself grace and mercy. Yeah. 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 I'm glad you said that because um, when you first started, you're like, you were really hard on yourself like very hard on yourself like you you didn't give yourself a pass in, in any way <laughs> um and so tell me about like that process because you know you started to realize it and we had to kind of like peel back the layers like you are not your decisions because you kept thinking well I am my decisions like I am my, my past and I'm like no you're not and so how, how was processing that and realizing I am not what I used to be and I, and I can actually move forward um I had to, there was a certain point in, in, in this process that stands out to me uh, so strongly. You pointed out to me that uh, I had become someone that I was with mm -hmm. and that, that it shaped who I became from then on, you know, as an, as an adult like my adulthood, he, he shaped me and who I became. And I had never heard that before. Mm. And it, that right there kind of like blew my mind. Um, but when you pointed it out, I could receive it though. Cause I typically would have argued that down that I had not become him, but it resonated. And um, I thank God that it did because it, it, that was a turning point for me. That was a turning point for me to um, give myself a little leeway because I actually didn't get a chance to become who I really am or what I should have been because I was influenced by someone that um, was a protector over me. He, he was somebody that I loved. So it, it just shaped me in a way. And um, it all wasn't good either. It wasn't good. It, it it turned me into a savage. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it turned it turned me into a savage. It turned me into, you know, I, I'm not from the hood. I'm not from the hood. I didn't grow up in the ghetto, but I had become ghetto. I had become ratchet, um, and I owned and lived that. I was a troublemaker. Uh, yeah, that's who I had become. And so when you started showing me those things, I had to like digest all that and we started to deal with different things. The program is actually phenomenal because it gets to things that we in our own minds that we don't realize. I never thought that this paperwork would uh, really express who I really am. Like when you would be telling me stuff, I would, I would record it and be like blown away. Like, wow, like this paperwork really gave her all this insight on me, mm -hmm. on what's going on inside of me, what's going on in my mental, where I'm at emotionally. And so, yes, it was, it was needed. All of this was needed. It was needed. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that was your turning point, too, because uh, I think it was probably like maybe like four or five weeks prior, like his life, it was like you kept reliving. It was almost as if because he had passed away, but it was almost as if he was still a living, breathing person. But after we had that conversation, it was like little by little, I didn't hear about him anymore. And I was like, and I didn't even bring him up. I, I, did, I did that intentionally because I'm like, she's not bringing any of that up. I'm not bringing any of that up. <laughs> like, and, I, and I can see like your uh your thought process about yourself was starting to change and it was starting to shift and you were you were starting to become you you again because you know you said as a child I was a sweet child like I wasn't I wasn't any of what I just turned into and now you could actually embody Ronnie 
you know, yes. not someone else. And, and that was that that was a big point for you that it, it wasn't easy um, to think about, but it was like the, the thing that you needed to like re- just start releasing your past. Mm-hmm. It was a shocker for me. I mean, because I would not have never agreed with that. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never been like, uh, you know, I would have argued you down. Like, I'm not like him. But honestly, I have become, I have became a female version of him. And um, actually, he used to say all the time, I don't worry about you. It, 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 it keeps me from worrying about you because I know you will take care of yourself. And so, yes, I have become crazy. Crazy. <laughs> I had to come crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of layers to kind of peel back. <laughs> yes. There were quite a few times where you were like, "Look, I want to quit. This is too much." <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, because so, you was you was getting underneath there, and that's where you needed to get. I needed to somebody to go beyond the surface and start digging up some things. And you started digging up things I had to face. You know. I had to face these things. I had to go ahead and address them and acknowledge the the, the role that even he played in my life and mm-hmm. and, and the, the 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 characteristics that I had picked pick up for myself. Like I took these on it as my own. Yeah. It was really like a defense mechanism, honestly. It was my protection. It protected me in the city life. Um Honestly, I'm a different person here in my hometown than I was in the city. You know, it's people that have been around me throughout the years. I spent 15, 14, 15 years in Indianapolis. So um, there are people who know me there that will be shocked of my lifestyle here. I'm actually more calmer. I'm more reserved. You know, I try to stay to myself. Uh, I'm not like I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, what what kept you, like, staying in it? Because the times where you were like, you know, I'm not, I'm not with it. But what kept you saying, you know what, I'm going to stick this thing out? I tried everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I've tried everything in this, in this life. I've done all types of things. So, I, this time, and I've even tried God. I've tried God and went back on that. But mm-hmm. when I revisit the time that I, I lived for God in 2007, when I revisit that, that's the best time of my life. That's the best time of my life. And so the reason it was so difficult this time is because of all the stuff I had allowed in and all the stuff that I had allowed to build up without you know recognizing them because instead of me dealing with things I let things happen and let them build up either I either I explode either I cause a a domestic dispute (laughs) (laughs) or I I run from it so those those were my three things and so my plate was just getting so high my only thing I had really gave another chance was God this is it for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't have no other option for no no more options anymore. Everything is about God now. Mm-hmm. I, I can't try nothing else. I can't try nothing else. So I had to stick this out because I've tried everything else and I know God will work. I know he, he works. I just have to work the process and not give up, not allow my feelings, not allow my emotions to um cause me to forfeit the promises because the promises are yes and amen so amen. i already know these things i refuse to believe that it is no hope for me in this that's a lie i refuse that and so and i thank you i have had to apologize to you i have had to oh i thank you for not giving up on me when i was acting crazy i might have been talking crazy i might have been saying you know to stuff but you will sit there and let me say what I'm gonna say and then you will still come forth with the word of God and so that's what a person needs to be pushed 
and stretched. And so, yes, you continue to keep me on that path. You would not allow me to go backwards. Yeah. That's what I needed. Those were the things that I needed. Yeah. And I, cause I, and I was seeing your power. I mean, it was just like, I, I know where Ronnie can be, so I ain't going to let go. <laughs> I, I, I know this this process isn't easy. So sometimes we liable to say anything, but you know, I, I didn't take anything personally because I know it was just you trying to get to the next part and that can that can be painful. <laughs> I was saying, and I, I, you know, I want to be honest. Um, when I signed up for this, I never uh, expected the things that happened and occurred, the 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 work that went on here. I mean, we we met every week. So I, I wasn't expecting this. And um, it's work. And a person needs to be prepared to do the work when they're signing up. And because you you are going to stay focused on that task. You know how some people want to blow a session? We didn't blow any sessions. Mm -hmm. The work is here. So you might be feeling, well, we need to go forward with the work today. Yes. <laughs> So you kept me on there like I, you, you feeling like this, but the work must be done. We still have to go forward on this work. So we on week such and such. Let's get this work done. And people need that. Mm -hmm. I needed that. I needed that. So yeah, it was, it was, all of this was a necessity for where God wants me to be and the things that he wants for my life, even for my ministry. Um, because even with that, you were study pushing, you know, we got to get this done. Mm -hmm. We got yep. to get this work done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, so. but, but you did, you know, like you said, there were moments where you just like, whatever, but you still came back and said, I got to get this thing done. <laughs> yes. Yes. I got to get it done. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to just allow yourself to, um, so it's like a, a, a like I was blossoming, and so I didn't I, I didn't want to get in the way of that uh, growing process, and so I would have to put my own feelings and stuff to the side, my emotions, and even my own vision for what I thought things looked like, because I I came to you for your help, so I had to allow you to show me this is this is the process that we go through, and these are things that you know to have worked. And um, I'm glad I followed it. That's how come I have all the content I need for my business. You know, it, it was strategic. It works. Trust me, it works. So, yes, yes, yes. it works. Yes, yes. And, you know, but again, you kept pushing through. So I, it, it was exciting to see you blossom because I don't even, I don't even think you realize how much you were even blossoming during the time, but I could, I could just see it, you know, week to week, I could see it. And, you know, you said you, you just had to try God again, you know, so how was it? Because the assessments were great and, you know, the worksheets were great. And how was it coupled with the Bible study, because, you know, now what I call master the power of habits for change is like how we get started with, you know, the self-awareness and the Bible study. And so how was all of that together for you? Not just the assessments, but also reading God's word. Um, that was a, like I said, you have to be prepared for the, the whole thing because it's a package. <laughs> and so I did not expect that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you know, my mentor to be telling me I need to read the Bible every day. So, but, and I, I'm preparing for ministry. I hear from God, you know, all of that, but I was not consistent with anything. And so God has been calling me to be consistent um, throughout this whole process. Even before that, he's been trying to get me to be consistent with things. So you you was like, okay, you know, the Bible studies, and you want to hear about them every every week. <laughs> so sometimes <laughs> I might not have everything I'm supposed to be having. That's because I didn't put forth everything I needed to in my Bible studies. And but those things are necessity. They were necessity to me. And it plays a part even in my everyday role today. You know, without praying and spending time in God's word, I, I can tell that I'm not the same. So 
people think just because you delivered or because you changed, it's like a, a antidote, like you took some medicine. It's not. It's you have to keep showing up every day to recommit yourself to that thing and allow God's word to transform your mind and your heart. This is daily. This is daily. And so that was needed for me to get that consistency, to get, you know, digging into the word and even taking up um, what you, you know, you call writing, writing down in the Bible study. You know, you write this down, write all this down, which when I studied the word before, I've never wrote anything down. Mm. Now I have a tablet that I write down what I've read and, and, and explain what I understand. And it's needed. It's needed. You know, you, what's the use of reading? The Bible's a giant book. What's the use of reading this book and you just calling yourself storing it all in there? It, you're not storing it all. Stop lying. You need to mm -hmm. write it down so that when certain things hit you, you can go back in your book with your understanding which god will even continue to give you different revelations on that thing as well but that that um concept i'm glad you taught me that to write down what you read in the bible what you studied um what holy spirit said to you never i've never done that i've never done that yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, it's a part of the process because because you have so much to do in the worksheets, it can be overwhelming if you ain't reading God on, alongside of it. <laughs> you know, yes. like reading, and that's why I always say, you know, I prefer people to read the Gospels because when you're seeing Jesus while you're going through your own process, it, it's more helpful because some of that shame and guilt that we're going through, God, we see it in Jesus that he didn't, he didn't put no shame and guilt on us, you know, he didn't condemn us. And so just, just reading the words of God um, with the program, of course, helps us to see ourselves a little bit better, you know, every day. Yes. Um, and so and it you know, helps bring for freedom. It helps bring for freedom as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so how was it, you know, after you were learning all these things about yourself and kind of going into like the target audience <laughs> worksheet? How was that like initially seeing like this is this is some for real for real work of you know really putting the the ministry together and who my people are going to be and what I can say to them. Um. I had never went into it like that. Um, it actually caused me to research the people that God wants me to serve and to see their needs and how I can um, assist them with the things that I have to offer. And it was, it was, it was, you know, it was intriguing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And initially, you know, you were like, what, what is all of this? <laughs> because I was trying to figure out, like, what, what does this have to do with anything? <laughs> Even with reading the Bible, like, it's not, like I said, you have to trust the process. I'm glad I didn't give up. And I'm glad that I was able to um, allow you to teach me. You know, I, I have a problem with people leading me, but I, you know, God had to keep reminding me like this. I sent you here and do the work. Yeah. yeah. She has what you need. Yeah, I don't care what it sounds like. Get what you need from her. She has what you need. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so who is God to you now versus when you first started the, the, the program? Um, God is at the forefront of my life. Everything I do, I, I make sure that he is in front, that he's leading me. I'm not, I'm no longer running this thing no more. It's, 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 my life is not my own. I'm living to fulfill God's purposes and plan for my life, whatever that may look like. Every day, you know, he puts me on something different. I don't even plan a lot of things anymore because I like to move uh, based off of with his directions. I like to be spirit led and um, that's really the difference in my ministry. 
that I am actually spirit led and God is center period. And so I, I, I won't be taking a lot of excuses either. And so I, I thank you for not accepting excuses because <laughs> I can procrastinate, you know, I can put things off, but you you was a matter of fact about things. Like we here for this. We're gonna get it done. And so yeah, I needed that. Yeah. Yeah. So so tell um tell us a little bit about uh like your mission and and your ministry and what you want to do to, to help women. Well, um I want to help women overcome different situations in life. A lot of things we um, deal with, it's not really addressed. And it, a lot of women, especially black women make like this is normal, it's not normal. We are actually uh, under demonic and satanic attack. Mm -hmm. And so women need to be taught and they even need the counseling and the the, the uh, reassurance on different things happening to their life in their life, uh, it needs to be pointed out to them because a lot of stuff we don't even see mm -hmm. that's happening to us because we're going through it. But I want to help women overcome overcome the different struggles, the different um, traumas and molestation and abuse and you know the the promiscuity and you know. I can speak on every situation that has occurred in my life. I, I, I mean, it's laid out before, you know, I don't got no secrets, nothing here. So I'm yeah. ready to talk about it all. And if I can use what happened to me to help somebody else, I'm, I'm ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a testament to, you know, you just submitting to God in this process because you, like you said, you went through all of that. Like you went through the, the sexual abuse, you went through the neglect, you know, you went through the domestic abuse, um, mm -hmm. all those different things. And you, you're here talking with me. <laughs> <laughs> I but survived. I, Even I, at times I when I thought I wasn't going to make it, mm -hmm. times I felt like I wasn't going to make it. There's been times where um, suicide has crossed my mind. There has been times where I have been just filled with so many different um, emotions. There's been times where I thought I was going to jail for hurting somebody. So, but I, I ain't been to jail. I ain't been to jail and I, I didn't die out here. I, you know, what Satan tried to do to me to kill me, it actually raised me up. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to talk about it. It's, it's, it's out there. Yeah, yeah, and I'm excited to, to to start to see some of your videos and uh, more of your your postings. <laughs> yes, I know you said you you still a little scared about all of it, um, but but hopefully us even going live today will will take some of the, the jitters out. <laughs> Listen, the warfare. This is what you gotta realize: the warfare that I have encountered to keep me from showing up on this video. You know. Satan will come from any different direction to try to deter you from going forward with the things of God. But I couldn't let, and I was trying to come up with all types of reasons to not show up. But, you know, I, I have to come on here to do what God wants me to do. I can't do some of what he is telling me to do and not do the other. I mean, because it's still disobedience. And so... I just pray that God continue to work with me with this going live because I do I don't like it, but this is what God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what He wants me to do. Yeah, yeah. And you want me to get on here and tell all my business? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It's to uplift somebody else and to help somebody else. So little, little by little, um, he, he he ain't making none of us do something that's just overly outside of ourselves. You know. Yeah. Um, so you can do it, you know, you're, you're doing your postings and all of that. Um, so I'm just, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm excited yes. for, for what's about to happen. Uh, when the book does come out, I, I'm going to be buying it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm excited. Uh, yes. Uh, Teresa said you should be so, uh, super, so proud, uh, Ronnie, the devil is mad. And so what? <laughs> yes. Yes. He's going to stay mad. I'm going to make sure I can keep him mad. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, before we, uh, I'll see if anybody has any questions, but is there anything that you want to say? Uh, um, anything about what you learned about yourself or revelations you got or anything else that you want to say to, to, to the people? I mean, I just learned that we, we have to push ourselves. Um, Kendra pushed me to go into areas that I didn't want to deal with or maybe I didn't know how to deal with, but I thank God that I allow her to push me and scratch me. Um, sometimes we get, we start to be resistant in a situation like that. I thank God that he allowed me to, um, to lean in. I, I just leaned into the process and allowed myself to be vulnerable. I had an issue with being vulnerable, but I thank God that she, uh, her heart, her heart for me and my situation helped me to be vulnerable with her, helped me to be uh, real and raw with her, which I'm, I'm real anyway, but it helped me to be uh, raw with her and allow her to uh, share her own opinion and input on things that were going on in, in my life because I needed to hear her perspective. Um, so you just have to allow yourself to um, to go there because it's needed. Like we're not machines. People want to make like women are machines and, you know, we can handle so much. I'm a strong black woman, yes. But there have been times I thought, you know, I was going to lose my mind, but God maintained my, my sanity. And, um, uh, if I hadn't have went through this process, I would still have things just piled up that I, I'm thinking I'm not even having these things or these are not issues, but they are. They so tall, they bigger than me. Mm. So I needed this. This is this is something that's needed. You know, we have to do the work. We need to start caring about ourselves, valuing ourselves enough, and making an investment in us. And 2020 guy came you know he spoke to me strongly you trying to do all these different things I want you to invest you know I had blue 2019 because God had actually given me mentors who came to me and was coming for free I didn't even have to pay for the services but I blew the services because I had one foot in and one foot out I was still trying to live worldly and, and, and serve God. God didn't call me to be lukewarm. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a decision. Like, who are you, who are you doing this for? Who are you going to live for? And what, what do you want to come out of this? And if you honestly looking for a change, God is the only way. Nothing mm -hmm. else in this world going to um, help you get to what you want and need in life. But God, you come to God, you lay everything before him and allow him to take you apart. And then he will set up every desire in your heart, every desire in your heart, every mm -hmm. desire. But as long as you got it in your hand, thinking you're going to do something, make a move with it, you mess it up every time. Amen. That's the truth. I mean, and, and hearing you now, it's like you sounded the exact same the first session and then everything started to like break down like the the, the facade came down <laughs> but now listening to you it's real <laughs> yeah like that journey of seeing you initially like thinking that you were at a certain place and then realizing I really need to do the work and now now when I listen to you it's it's authentic it's real like you you actually believe it for yourself and you're actually moving forward in a way that you just you just didn't sound like before and, and I'm just so thankful that you know God led you to me <laughs> yes um and so and, and it's just humbling to just see the process and to see your work and to see you just push forward with all the different things that you've gone through in your life like you just kept pushing forward like and, and, and it's so it's just so amazing. It's so yes. amazing, Ronnie. And I, I'm, I'm just so proud of you and just so excited for you um, and, and where God is leading you. Um, for 
for the ladies that are on this uh, Zoom call. Do either one of you have um, a question or a comment for her, for Ronnie, uh, but before we get out of here? And Teresa said, uh, preach no mediocrity. That, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We ain't got time for being mediocre around here. We got things to do. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, as far as this program, though, I, I thank you for having this program to help women and um, get them going and push them into their destiny, into their purpose. Um, I, actually didn't, I, was, I didn't know. actually showed up on my timeline. So, you know, God put you in the right place for me and so I'm like oh okay so I need this and so I clicked on it and I'm like you know I, he put you right there where I needed you to be to help me to uh, get to this point because I mean I haven't done this work on my own I haven't done this work on my own he he has placed the vine um, to help me get to this place that I'm in now. And um, I'm, I'm a constant work in progress. But uh, thank God, thank God, I, I, I no longer show up as who I used to be. Mm -hmm. Amen. I had to tell an old friend that uh, the person that she's used to seeing and knowing, she has passed away. I, I don't ever intend on being her anymore you know anytime you see somebody it's willing to fight and get into some type of mayhem all the time that person that person is hurt and bad. this person is not just um that's that's no happiness at all there's no happiness in that at all and i, I refuse and i refuse even the, the thought of that so and you right, my past is not who I am. I am not that person. I actually never was. I, I took up the coat of that. I picked that up on my own. That was not on my back. It was not on my back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my, my virtual hands, because I, I can't get up and, 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 and walk and run and stuff. So I got to do the virtual hands. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, this was and it goes to the question, um, uh, how do you view yourself now versus how you viewed yourself before the program? Um, and I think that kind of what you just kind of said a little bit about, you know, I am not who, I'm not my past. No, no. My past is, is a part of my testimony, yes. It's, it's the things that I have endured, what I overcame, you know, but I am not my past. A lot of this stuff I didn't choose for myself. Um, I wound up being in situations that kind of shaped me into a lot of these different things. And um, that's why you need to get the help. When you get the help, you're able to hear these things and look back at things and, and be able to receive them. Because sometimes we don't see what we're going through. We don't see the mess that we're creating for ourselves. Um, we want to put things off on God. I used to blame God for a lot of different things. But God didn't choose these people. God didn't put me in these situations. God didn't tell me to uh, pack up and run to Mississippi because, you know, this, this, this situation, I no longer want to really deal with it, so I'm going to run. So I would pack up and move back to, like, you know, Indianapolis, Mississippi, and jump up. Hey, and be headed on back. And then when things here ain't working the way I want to, you know, I want them to work, I'm packing up or run back. You can't run from, you know, you can't run from things. You have to deal with them and face them head on. That was my that was my motto though. I would run or I would dip out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can't run from things, you gotta face them head on. And you did. You yes. came on top with Jesus. <laughs> Yes, praise God, praise uh, God. Again, I'm, I'm excited. So, so all, all of y'all follow 
uh, Rondra Nika Shaw, um, her, she, she's, she already posts a lot, but now she's about to fully get into her ministry. She's, she'll, she'll be texting me and saying, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So I know she's continuing to do the work and it's really exciting to see her excitement um, as, her, as her ministry continues to, to flourish and she goes full in um, yes. for God and what he has for her. So um, if I don't have any more questions, then we'll go ahead and, and wrap this thing up. Um, again, I'm excited for you, Ronnie. <laughs> I thank God for you and your journey and your ministry um, and helping women that are, you know, broken and wounded and wanting to teach them and, and coach them and all the things that you, you have going on that God has shown you um, for your life. Um, and for anybody out there that may want some, some help in the future that wants coaching help, um, you can uh, find me at Kendra-Dublin.com. You can message me if you want to right here on my profile. Um, but that is Kendra-Dublin.com. Um, I'll go ahead and put it in, in the chat as well. So, so you all have it, but you can see my my one-on-one -on -one services and um, how it can, as you can see, apply to your life as Ronnie is saying and how it how it changed her life and really prepared her for the course that she is fully on today. Uh, yes. So... If you don't have anything else to say, uh, we, we are out of here. Um, and thank you for the compliments of um, the coaching and the ministry. And I, I'm, I'm just thankful. And all I can say is the Holy Spirit is God that's, that's doing his work. <laughs> yes, I thank God for you. I thank God for you. I thank, I thank God that you are honoring him. Um, because like I said, you know, we, all, we don't always answer the call, but I'm thankful that you answered the call. And not only that, you you um, created and provided a place, you know, for women to come come to you and allow you to help them do the work. But you must know that she is not doing the work for you <laughs> on no day. <laughs> so you must show up for your work. She is going to make sure that you do the work. And so, yeah, I can't stress that enough. But it's, it's a great investment. It's worth every dime. Thank you, Ronnie. Yes. Thank you, yes. thank you. Um, well, we'll be back, um, I think, in a few weeks for, for uh, another client. But again, Ronnie, go follow her. Rondranika Shaw, go follow her. Um, I, I have her tagged in a previous post, so go follow her. Um, again, I'm excited for you, and I'll continue to pray for, for your ministry. And everybody out there, um, I am praying for you as well as you are continuing to prepare for your purpose and go ahead and get started today because you already know what I'm going to say. Tomorrow <laughs> is too late to be great. Y'all have yes. a good day. Okay, Look, okay, everybody. <laughs>